So uh, it is um, April the 23rd, 2017. And if, you, um, if you've been watching my videos at all, you'll know that uh, back in uh, 2011, we planted these two trees. They were small little bushes then. And uh, 2011, six years. And um, well, I'd say five years, we have not yet actually gotten any uh, cherries from our, uh, from our bushes. We've gotten cherries growing, but uh, we haven't actually gotten any that we could eat. One or two. <laughs> Other than that, none. Because every year there's some crazy thing that happens. Um, so um, last year was so intense. Uh, and so disheartening because I had a lot of cherries actually I put them in a bowl covered them with plastic brought them in the house and before I knew it there were little maggots crawling out of the cherries it made me say well what what actually is going on um, and and I actually looked at the uh, life cycle of the uh, cherry aphids that we've been uh, tortured with and the life cycle really well, like after after the uh, the trees have been pretty much ruined, um, the aphids, whatever, sorry, I don't remember now, but they uh, they get their wings and they fly away. They come back just a time before the cherries are ripe, and they lay eggs inside the cherries, which is uh, what happened. Then then they I suppose once it warms up, then they all start hatching. They eat their way out of the cherries. They crawl out of the cherries. The idea is that a lot of the cherries fall on the ground and then the, then the little worms come out and they burrow into the ground and they stay dormant over the winter. Well, um, so I thought, okay, I put fabric all over the, the, um, the soil now. So now I've got fabric there. And I've got one more thing I'm going to do because once I really started to pull stuff up here, I realized this entire area is an anthill. And I understand why the ants want to live here because uh, they've had a really good time uh, farming the aphids. But that's not going to happen this year, I hope, because besides the fabric, I am going to put this uh, tree banding gum, which you know is like tangle foot, I guess, um, and I'm going to put that around the uh, base of the tree, uh, both of these trees. I'm serious about it this time. Um, I know you don't put it directly on the tree. It says right on the uh, in the instructions. Um, so I've got fiberglass um, um, pipe warmer, and um, yeah, I'm going to put this on. Uh, you need to have a really, really tight seal because the ants are going to be able to crawl underneath it. So you don't put this directly on the uh, the trunk. You um, put you put this on first and seal it up so that they can't get in behind there because they'll figure out a way they'll get behind there. And and really, I'm thinking about the ants mostly with this. I know those little tiny uh, the little tiny worms. Um, you know they can crawl up the tree, and hopefully they won't be able to. Uh, I'll catch them as well. I'm hoping to really be able to stop this whole thing. And I'm and I'm doing this uh, doing a quick little video here. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna set it up and then I'm gonna show it to you and then we'll see what happens. You know, like the uh, the worst case scenario, I suppose, um, it'll just be another year with no cherries. But I mean, these cherry trees are beautiful, and when they when they blossom, you can see it's uh, it's still early. Uh, I am getting buds now, so there could be, um, you know, there could be lots of cherries if I play my cards right. But the cherries are not really. Uh, ripe uh, and sweet and ready to eat until like September. So it's got a long, long way, and uh, and I really have to fight with a lot of uh, a lot of nature, put it that way, to try to actually get some cherries for myself. And I guess uh, it's so difficult, <laughs> so difficult to have to fight all the time. But this is what the cherries look like when they're ripe, and really they are beautiful. And uh, the few that I've gotten to eat have been. Um, not ripe, but you know, nice and juicy. I could make jam out of them if nothing else, if I can only get enough. So anyway, this year I'm going to try this. I'm going to see what happens. Once I have it applied, um, I'll show it to you again, and um, and I'll post this video, and then sometime during the course of the summer, because every year I I do post some little thing about the. Uh, um, you know about the aphids and whatever catastrophes are befalling my poor trees here and um, uh, we'll see what happens maybe this year will be different 
Actually, I kind of like this. I, uh, I just took a piece of the fiberglass here. I cut it. I uh, put a piece of the, uh, the duct tape on it and wrapped it tightly around. Looks to me like I have a nice little seal here. I don't think anything's getting through that, but I'm hoping this works. I don't want to get it all over everything. It is my goal not to. And I'm, I'm well aware that, um, uh, like I know that those little, the little tiny uh, baby aphids or whatever they are when they come up, they're gonna be pretty small. So this may be no, the fabric may be no barrier may be no barrier at all uh, for them. They may go right through it. Uh, hopefully, um, this will stop them. And I know also that the ants um, uh, are not going to see the, the fabric as such a big, uh, big deal. Because certainly they'll be able to um, uh, they'll figure out ways around it, obviously. They're actually pretty smart. And I read quote, something fairly entertaining that uh, somebody said when they were using um, like Tanglefoot to, to uh, keep ants out, um, that the ants figured out a way to create a bridge over it using pieces of grass. So you have to keep an eye on it and realize that, uh, that ants are determined they're gonna they're gonna get up there okay so um, so I'm done I've uh, applied the um, the banding on this one and on this one anyway that's it we're all set and we'll see what happens this year